What's happening guys, this is Nick from S2 Strategic Defense and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys my new favorite tool for dry fire practice with an AR. Stay tuned. Alright guys, welcome back. Man, it's been a long time since we've done some videos for our YouTube channel. Don't be offended by it, just been super busy with the business and just you no know, travel and all kinds of different stuff. But right now it's holiday season and hopefully I have a little bit of downtime to make some more videos and kind of re-engage with you guys. In this video we're going to be going through my new favorite tool as it comes to dry fire work with an AR. All right. Now if you guys follow this channel you know that I have a playlist up there. It's called the S2 Dry Fire Friday where we were working the pistol, right? Different types of dry fire drills that we can work on to build functional, usable, repeatable skills. Then I added in the Mantis X10, which, you know, we've raffled a bunch of these off, we've sold a whole bunch, meaning, you know, people have watched our videos and then gone and purchased them and that kind of thing. And people love this thing, right? It's graphical analysis, it's got challenges, gives you scores, all kinds of stuff. This video is not about the X10, so I'll, I'm not gonna, you know, bore you with all that stuff. Well, that doesn't mean that we don't do dry fire practice with our rifles and our carbines either, right? I do it all the time, uh, mostly because I think having the longer, the bigger form factor, right, makes it uh, different challenges come in, right? Navigating through doorways and staircases and that kind of stuff, much harder done with something that's, you know, longer than just a pistol. And so, you know, you have to work that kind of uh, maneuverability, that kind of adaptability right side, left side, right, you know, drop magazines, get new magazines in, transitioning to your pistol, pistol goes back in, rifle comes back out, working that sling, working the optic, all kinds of different stuff comes in handy with the, with the rifle. And so dry fire is always a great way. Then I saw this product that came on market and I was actually kind of slow to get it, I'm one of the last ones. It's called the Black Beard. Okay, also made by Mantis. And so, you know, I was kind of sold on this thing right when I first saw it. I just didn't get it right away. I just didn't see it till late. Honestly, I'm kind of slow that way. But we know Mantis products, right? I use their X10 on a day in, day out basis. I stand behind that product. I think it's a great product. The Blackbeard is actually a tool that you insert into your carbine that will help uh, cycle the, the trigger itself so you don't have to keep working the charging handle, all right? And I think that's a great way because now you can start building speed on the trigger, accuracy, transitioning from one target to another, actually see where it's at and it emits a laser, okay? And so the Mantis Blackbeard, let's take a look and see what's inside of this box real quick. So the box comes in this nice fancy Mantis Blackbeard, it says AR-15 Auto Reset Trigger System. You open that, inside that is another fancy box, which is always good to have. When you open that, it's got a carrying case. That comes in handy because I travel a lot and if I'm teaching a carbine class, I have my carbine with me. So it's a great way to dry fire. And then when you open up the inside of it, it has this red uh, charging handle slash bolt carrier group and then the magazine. And the magazine is actually serves as the battery to help reset that trigger every time you press the trigger. All right guys, for simplicity's sake, I went ahead and took one of my AR pistols and installed the Blackbeard unit on it. To install, it's really simple. All you're doing is taking out the rear pin, opening up the upper from the lower, you, re you remove the bolt carrier group and the charging handle, install the bolt carrier group charging handle unit from the Blackbeard, and then the magazine becomes the battery. Listen to this. All right, I'll do it again for you in case you didn't catch that. One more time. Okay. So it's activating, it's resetting the trigger for you, okay? And so when you guys use this, the safety still works, right? So if I got the safety on right now, no trigger press. As soon as the safety gets depressed, it's resetting. So what you're doing is you're avoiding that whole having to charge it every single time uh, that you wanna actually get the trigger to work. Carbines are unique. Almost everybody who gets a AR or an AK or any of that stuff, does some kind of an aftermarket trigger on it, right? There's a whole bunch of brands out there, guys, Lee, CMC, a bunch of them. You need to have a good feel for that, right? Flat face, curved, one and a half pound, two and a half pound, three and a half pound, whatever you guys like. You need to be used to that, okay? And so having that automatic reset allows you to start working that trigger and so that we can get a good feel for it. And by working that trigger, you'll start building speed into it, you'll start building a little bit more control over it. The more trigger presses you have on it, 
the more familiar you're gonna be. That's just a, you know, it is what it is. And so that's a, a, a great way to start training is using the black beard. Now, if you're running some kind of an optic and you wanna zero this laser image that comes out, watch that uh, green target on the right. So when I press the trigger, you see the laser comes out. If you wanna zero that to your optic, on the bolt carrier group component, there's a couple screws over here, Allen keys, that you can go ahead and adjust windage and elevation, okay? So take it to the range with you and you can start you know, zeroing this thing back out uh, according to your optic. Why is that important? Because now you can start working the offset aim, right? Height over bore issues when it comes to optics. Okay, so you have that part of it. The battery life in this thing, now they say about 7,500 to 10,000 trigger presses and it's gonna need to charge. Uh, I've got about 5,000 into this one, haven't charged it yet, still seems to be running pretty strong. We'll see how many we get out of it. To charge it, they give you this little uh, uh, micro USB adapter, just charge the battery system, it seems to charge pretty fast, uh, and then you're back good to go, all right? Now, one of the things that I want to point out is just overall form factor, right? If you're working a carbine, let's just say for home defense, you have challenges because of the form factor. It's longer than a pistol, right? And so if you're navigating through doorways or hallways or staircases, you're dealing with the length of the firearm, right? And so sometimes you're on right shoulder, sometimes left shoulder, sometimes you're dropping the, you know, going to your you know, pistol, that kind of stuff. And so there's all kinds of different manipulations that are happening. You don't get good at those unless you can actually dry fire them. And so, you know, this is a great way of being able to do that. For me, I take these same, you know, IDPA or IPSC type uh, targets and I put them around through the house and I navigate the house and, you know, clear the house and that kind of stuff because I want to work in a real world environment. Can't necessarily do that at the range and I can't get to the range every single day, right? And so, you know, it's a useful tool when it comes to that. So let's put this thing in action real quick. Huh? I'll show you guys one quick drill that we're gonna do on, this, uh, on the targets that are behind me using the black beard. Stand by. All right guys, so what I want you to do is take a look at the two uh, IDPA type targets, which is the cardboard ones that are on the stands over here. We're gonna do a basic box drill. Box drill meaning we're gonna go two center mass on the left, two center mass on the right, headshot right, headshot left. Okay, so uh, a total of six shots there, okay? So when we say go, Go. Okay, that's a basic box drill. Let's do it again. Go. Good. Again, and go. And again. Go. All right, let's do a different uh, pattern here, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a full uh, Mozambique on each target. We'll start with the left green, work to the uh, left IDPA target, and then we'll work to the right IDA target, and then the right green, okay? Here we go. Three, two, one, and go. Good, okay. And let's go left green, then the left cardboard, right green, right cardboard. So we're going straight across the board here. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, and go. Good, safety's back on. Now we're gonna do the same thing, except uh, let's go the left green, the first cardboard, the right green, and then the second cardboard. Okay, and then we'll work our way back around. Same box drill component, right? Here we go. Safety's on. Three, two, one, and go. Good. Man, that thing's just a lot of fun to work with every single time. One of the other things that we can do is I use this along with my CERT pistol quite a bit as well. CERT pistol, as in here, that emits a red laser, right? And so we could start you know, uh, doing the transitions, you know, uh, working off the rifle onto the pistol, pistol down, get the rifle back in, and that kind of a configuration as well. All right, guys, so that's uh, the first basics about the black beard. Now, I'm going to be doing more videos, doing some dry fire drills with you guys on this thing, uh, as well as the pistol as well. 
Maybe we'll bring back uh, S2 Dry Fire Friday, right? It's been kind of fun. It seems to be getting uh, good feedback. Uh, if you guys are interested in training along, obviously make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell because you know it feeds the algorithm. And if you want a Blackbeard or a Mantis X10, right? Go down in the description. I'll put a couple of affiliate links down below. Help us out. I'll see you guys in the next one.